My name is Natalie Friedman. And I'm Carrie Love. And we are here to present our paper, What Robots Saved from Clothing, by Natalie Friedman, Carrie Love, Ray L. C., Jenny Sabin, Guy Hoffman, and Wendy Ju. Most robots are unclothed. This fact may not seem like a problem, since robots are usually not in a context where modesty or coverings are expected from them. While clothes might not be a necessity for robots, we believe clothing presents an opportunity in mediating technical challenges for robot interaction design. We analyze existing designs of robots and extrapolate on examples contributed by our interdisciplinary team. This paper provides a speculative theoretical framing, taxonomy, and key cases of robots and clothing to help define a new area in designing interactive robot systems. What are clothes for robots? We argue against considering clothes as just decoration. Instead, we assert that what robot clothes are is integrally tied to what robots need from clothing. As in the internet dog pants debate, which asks if a dog needs all four legs to be covered, robot clothing should analogously fulfill needs robots have, rather than just being human clothes on a robot. What robot clothes can do for designing interactive systems. We know disc researchers don't only design robots, but the discussion of robot clothes is relevant to interaction designers at large, because adding interchangeable, easy-to-read physical elements can make the function of a system clearer and more intuitive for people to interact with. Robot clothing demonstrates how the success of a system is enhanced by having more options to adapt, remain safe, and signal attention and identity. Here are a few highlights of how robot clothing can extend HCI and human-robot interaction. Clothes for in-situ attention. Fashion designers are specialists in using color and form to obfuscate areas on the wearer. Bright colors on robot clothes can direct attention, while camouflage muted colors might not. People might also perceive movement through the sound of fabric. For robot clothing, designed intentional sounds could make the interaction more or less appealing. Legible motion. The readability of robots has an impact on the success of the interaction between the human and the robot. Picture this. Before a robot begins to run, the fabric could sway back before the robot shoots forward. This indicates that humans should move to the side. The robot jumps forward, the fringe flies up, the robot stops while the fringes continue moving. This movement could be analogous to this illustration of an animated squirrel's body and tail. Tactile human-robot interaction. The tactile qualities of robot clothing can help to mediate a tactile human-robot interaction. For example, putting soft surfaces between the human and the robot to soften contact to provide slick surfaces or to prevent catching or dirtying. Challenging human biases. An ongoing issue is the dilemma of using human stereotypes when designing a human-robot interaction. The signals expressed in the construction and dressing of robots evoke strong cultural scripts. In one example of possible socioeconomic bias, the Hitchbot, a hitchhiking unaccompanied robot, constructed out of spare parts, relies on the kindness of strangers. Its style could have unintentionally signaled that it was lower class, which may have contributed to its eventual mistreatment. We suggest that designers should use novel ways to dress robots that could help challenge human-biased hierarchies. Robot fashion gone wrong. While there are many potential advantages of robot fashion, designers need to also consider the question, what is a wardrobe malfunction for a robot, and how does it differ from a wardrobe malfunction for a human? Next, we caution designers about a few of these possible malfunctions. Physical interference. The wrong material could be too heavy, thermally inappropriate, limit the motion or functionality of the robot, or even expose wires. We recommend that any materials draped on the robot should be tested while the robot is in motion in multiple environments. Miss signaling. Fancy robot clothing might signal that the robot wearing the clothing has sophisticated capabilities. Sophia, the technology demonstration Android, designed by Hanson Robotics, for example, wears a high fashion dress in scripted interviews. However, Sophia's limited ability to understand and generate original speech belies her fancy dress. Wrong clothes for the wrong situation. Dressing robots for social situations requires sensitivity and cultural knowledge. A service robot wearing festive clothing to a solemn occasion might be offensive to the guests it serves. Cultural appropriation. Robot clothing might make use of cultural and historical references. When designing clothing for robots which intend to reflect a culture, it is important to fully understand the repercussions of misrepresentation and make efforts to avoid appropriation. Best practices for this would incorporate inclusive design. What do robots need from clothes? 
we suggest categorizing robot-specific needs into three potential uses for robot clothes, adapting to context, protection, and signaling. We want to share a few of our reference cases that illustrate how this framework applies to real-world examples. Pepper. SoftBank Robotics' mass-produced humanoid robot, Pepper, is designed to connect with people, assist them, and share knowledge with them. Hasumi Kazutaka, head of SoftBank Robotics' Content Marketing Center, explained the need to signal individual identity, saying, At first I thought it was crazy to have robots wearing clothes, but then I realized how important it is to distinguish between Peppers with identical faces. Pepper has already been clothed frequently enough that an online retail shop opened offering specialized clothing and accessories, like tunics with openings for Pepper's screen or suction cup earrings. Pepper's individual signal gender can be flexible, and we see the robot being dressed to present different genders interchangeably. At a fashion competition sponsored by SoftBank, we see Pepper dressed as a nurse, ryokan clerk, airport concierge, and childcare assistant. The robot has also donned a face mask as a greeter to people quarantining for COVID-19. While primarily used in commercial environments, Pepper has taken on religious roles. While dressed as a Shinto shrine attendant at a convention in Japan, audience members spontaneously bowed down for blessings. Pepper has also become an affordable substitute for a human Buddhist priest reading sutras at funerals. Since the role is ceremonial, the robot dons robes associated with the role. While some scholars argue that Buddhist and Shinto ideas incline the Japanese to afford sanctity to robots, it is hard to imagine Pepper would have sufficient gravitas for religious roles without the traditional robes that show affiliation, authority, and spirit. Robotex. Robots can use protective clothing to provide durability and to protect the investment in the equipment. One key example is this Armatex Robotex product, which is a robot covering designed for extreme industrial environments. It's advertised as a robot protective clothing made up of high strength aromatic polyamide woven fabric that is coated with a specialized high performance silicone elastomer. This material has abrasion resistance, thermal stability, thermal conductivity, and is ozone, UV, and fluid resistant. This multifunctional protective layer is also flexible, which means it can fit around multiple industrial robots. Relay. Relay the robot is a service robot that delivers toothbrushes, towels, and snacks to hotel guests. Relay's body is augmented with decals sometimes in the form of a bow tie or hotel branding. Staff at hotels dress up their Relay robot with a logo or thematic colors. Relay's decals are an example of how clothes demonstrate group identity through branding and a service role through a bow tie decal. The branded decals on Relay can also take advantage of the impact that personalization has on interactive systems. Personalization has been found to cause people to treat an appliance robot as a member of the household and to strengthen bonds between the robot and owners over time. In a longitudinal study, researchers Sung, Grinter, and Christensen also found that a personalized service robot enhanced rapport, improved cooperation, and engagement in service settings. Design considerations. In this paper, we address how materials, form, color, style, and historical references intersect with the framework items of adapting to context, protection, and signaling. Please see our paper for more on the relationship between design considerations and the uses for robot clothes. Conclusion. While designing robot clothing does have risks, it offers opportunities for signaling, protection, and adaptability, which can lead to better robots and better human-robot interaction. Designers should consider how to use robot clothing while continuously testing durability and social perception. We also suggest that designers should not only be mindful to avoid the reproduction of biased human hierarchies through inclusive design, there could also be real opportunity to challenge existing biases. Clothing for Robots provides a way to learn about how humans interact with machines and with each other in many contexts. As our exploration to better understand robot clothing's potential led us to draw from material science, cross-cultural studies, animation, 
fashion, costumery, and puppeteering, we speculate that the topic of robot fashion design will call on other DIS researchers to extend their reach too. We hope everyone can use similar approaches to improve first impressions of interactive systems and expand the range of possible interactive system functionalities. That is an overview of our paper titled What Robots Need from Clothing. Please contact us if you have any questions or comments.